Okay, we're back at the talk of the tailgate at the Atascacita Eagle homecoming right here at Turner Stadium, right here at Texan Plaza at Texan at uh, Turner Stadium. And it's time to get a little bit serious now. We've got Vic Goradia from uh, Herman. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about shoulders tonight. Um, and I've got two terrible ones, so I've got a whole bunch of questions to ask. As a matter of fact, we might just operate right here on this table in just a few minutes. Vic, glad to have you. Glad Thank to have you, you in Texas. Yeah, good to Understand be here. you just got here. I just got here from Virginia. Virginia. Well, that's not that's not as bad as they made it out to no, be. No, he said Yankee. I don't know where oh, he got no, that. No, 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 that's not bad. We can live with that. Yeah. Okay, we'll take those guys. Yeah. Memorial Herman, I don't know if you're familiar. Memorial Herman has just been an unbelievable partner for Umbel ISD, Umbel ISD Athletics. And, uh, man, and we, we've just – they've done so much in this community. And uh, just we're welcome to have one more Memorial Herman guy Yeah, here. I appreciate that. It's great to be here. Let's talk a little bit about shoulders. I, I know – they're injured in football they're injured in baseball i guess baseball is probably more injuries now with the shoulder than than there is in football or maybe any other sport right now uh, and i've got two terrible ones that i never got taken care of but let's talk a little bit about an actual shoulder injury if a kid gets out here and it's bruised how, how would a guy differentiate from a, a hurt shoulder or you know what's what's the signs of a, it might be serious yeah, you know, the, the most serious one that we see is when someone dislocates their shoulder, the ball pops out of the right socket. Away. That's one that you know right away. There's not like you're questioning that one. The ones that you see that aren't quite as serious is when someone might uh, bruise it real bad. You know, they come down on their shoulder, on the top of their shoulder, and it's really sore mm -hmm. in there. It might be a little sprained, but uh, it's something that's going to get better. Um, is there a... Is there a a tendonitis or a soreness or and that doesn't necessarily mean the shoulders I, let's call it injured it just hurts right is yeah, that yeah it just hurts and you know as long as they're able to lift the arm up and everything then you know we feel pretty good about the rotator cuff that's the other thing that you worry about but as long as they're able to lift the arm up pretty well and they may not be able to initially, you know, you may have to ice it down a little bit first. I, I guess the rotator cuff is the thing that everybody knows. If you turn on the news, if you turn on the 6 o'clock news, there's a good chance sometime during the you can hear somebody's got a torn rotator cuff or a damaged rotator cuff. Tell us a little bit exactly what that is. Yeah, the rotator cuff is a group of muscles around your shoulder, and they help you raise your arm up. And what they really do is they pull the ball into the socket and they really help give it a lot of stability in there. And so when it tears, it will tear off of the bone. That's a pretty serious injury when that happens. Now, when that happens, I, you hear some guys will, will, in a baseball, for instance, some guys will pitch through that till the end of the year. I guess there, there's different uh, degrees of a rotator cuff tear. Is that correct? There are, and actually when you're talking about baseball players and even football players uh, that are young, the more common injury is really the labrum. You've probably heard of the labrum. Yeah, and explain that a little bit because yeah. you do hear a lot about that. Yeah, now. and that's actually more common in younger people is the labrum. The rotator cuff, you know, the bad tears are kind of in older guys like us. <laughs> right. So and the labrum, now is the labrum? The labrum is right between the ball and the socket. It's like the cartilage between the ball and the socket uh, that helps kind of hold the ball in there. And when you get a real bad injury where you fall on your arm, that labrum can tear off of the socket. Now, not every time a shoulder's injury, it, it, does it need to have surgery? Or, or there, there's ways now you, you don't have to necessarily have the, the where they cut you from ear to ear and work on your shoulder. I mean, they're a lot better at that now, aren't they? Absolutely. We do most of it now arthroscopic, where we just put a couple tiny little poke holes in there and put a camera in the size of a pencil. And, and you can pretty much repair most of everything. We can repair most of everything these days. Can we do it now? I've got two that I'd love for you just to go to work on. Yeah, we might hook that I camera up right there. I bet got something there in the concession stand <laughs> we could get right to work on. That's right. Absolutely. So do you see, and, and this is probably not a fair question, but are, are more shoulder injuries in football or baseball? or uh, it, 
Yeah, I think we see more in baseball. Yeah. You know, just because of that constant repetitive throwing. And, and there seems to be a lot more of that now. Yeah. You know, well, because the kids are starting off younger and younger playing, and they play year-round. Right. They don't have a break. Right. Like, you know, there's not like these distinct seasons. These kids play, and they specialize in a sport really early, and they kind of get a lot more of that repetitive overuse they stuff. They really do, don't they? Yeah. They really do. That's a, that's a big change from, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, it is. Now, when when a, a if a if a kid say a twelve year old kid hurts his let's say labrum hurts his labrum, how difficult is that for him to come back and play again? Say when he's a freshman in high school or or the next year, for instance. But the rehab on a shoulder is not an easy rehab, is it? No, it's not. It can take some time. You know that twelve year old. They usually, what they get most of in baseball is kind of those overused things where we call it like little leaguer shoulder, and it's really related to their growth plates because they're still that's, growing that's, in that's there. What I, yeah, that's my question. Yeah, they're still growing, and so it's basically your body telling you you're overdoing it, and that's why, you know, for especially for those young kids that are pitching, we don't want them doing anything except fastballs, you know. Do you guys do you guys do that? Do you guys educate people the the little leaguers and things like that on what? And I, my brother's a baseball coach, and yeah. he, he tells me now that most of the clinics, and he goes to several every year, that it used to be about pitching and and how to throw harder, but now it's more about mechanics and and the safety of the kids. There's he said he listens to more doctors than he does pitching coaches now because yeah. they're trying. To, the biggest thing is now to keep the kids healthy. Uh, yeah, exactly. And the coaches know a lot more now, too, though, because no, they've they heard do. us talking about it. And so they all know what pitch counts are and, and all of those types of things. People are more aware of it now. And so, you know, even the parents and stuff, they they kind of have a feel for that. Uh, especially, I mean, you got to do it because these kids are playing so yeah. much year-round. Yeah. You know, you can't just pitch year-round. Are you a believer? You said pitch counter. I know some guys will say, well, if they're in good enough shape and they're working hard enough, <clears throat> it's more about the rest and stuff. For I'm talking about a high school kid, not a 12-year-old kid. Yeah. That if he does throw 110 pitches, that's probably not the end of the world if he's in good enough shape and his strengths. How do you feel about that? You know, if he's got really good mechanics and he's, you know, he's using his legs and his power, uh, if he's just throwing all arm and elbow, it's then probably not a good thing. it's probably not a good thing. So you've got to. You know, you got to make sure that his coaches are really working with him, make sure he's got good mechanics. Of course, you know, if he's not, then he's going to be getting pain and stuff, right. and that's kind of a sign right. that once we start seeing any problems, we're like, you know, we're really trying to limit him at that point. Well, I know in Umblasty, and I, I do know a lot of these coaches, and they are very familiar with proper mechanics and things like that. And, and they do, I mean, a kid might throw 110 pitches, but they immediately ice him. He's been working in off season, his arm's strong. And I guess the big thing is his pain. And, and when, when the kid's hurting, it's time to go. Yeah, when they start having any pain at all, then that's, that's a sign right there that they're overdoing it. And so if, if they're not and they're progressing fine and they're pitching that much, then it's, they're probably going to be fine. Yeah. It's, you know, I think it's one of these sports that kind of self-selects itself. I it mean, really does. You, don't, you, know, you, you have kids that look like they're going to be great pitchers, but they start getting hurt and their body's just not letting them do it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, Vic, I sure do appreciate the time you're yeah. able to spend. Really glad you're back. You're a Texan now. We Absolutely. just we just made you a Texan. Yeah. So I'm uh, learning you, all about this Texas high school football. Well, it's serious ready to business. See a lot of it tonight. I know. Now, do you have family here with you? Yeah, two. My wife and two kids. And, and how are they like in Texas? They're, so, well, they they're got, liking when it. When did you move here? August. Oh, and so they you eat. got to see a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. You still got to see some of it. Well, it's going to cool off to about 90 here tonight. So yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's going to be feel a little breeze. It's like a nice night. <laughs> It'll be good, Vic. All thank right. you for coming yep, out. Good you. luck. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.